Now we're live. Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. This is the latest Manchester United news on this Friday morning. And look, Paul Pogba's done it again. He's gone on international duty and he's let his mouth run away with him. I don't know why we get surprised about this because he does it every single time. Also, Lee, also a potential issue around Eric Bailly. Um, did go off yesterday. Looked like it was a hamstring injury. He says it's fatigue, but hey, come on. The same old concerns coming out about Manchester United and injuries and how ill-prepared we are. We know we're ill-prepared. We know we're ill-prepared for this season, but look, we are going to get injuries. I don't know what we're going into this season expecting that Cavani won't get injured, that Bailly won't get injured, that other, you know, Pogba won't get injured, Martial won't get injured. They're all going to get injured because they always do get injured. And we've got a very threadbare squad. So if you think it's bad now, it can get a lot worse if, as expected, we have the same injury problems we always seem to get October, November. And you might need to push that back November, December this year because remember the season has started a month later. So let's start off with Paul Pogba. And look, you know what? I just think with Pogba now, get him out of the club. Um, and I know people are going to say that's really harsh, and I'm a fan of Paul Pogba. But we've just lost a game 6-1 at the weekend. He was absolutely trash in the second half. Yeah, Luke Shaw was out of position. Yeah, Maguire was bad. He was lazy in the penalty he gave away, and he didn't track Aurier's run. And he was playing on the left side. So, look, Luke Shaw maybe should be in a better position, but it ain't Luke Shaw's job to deal with the right back when he's having to deal with a, left wing a right winger as well. So, Pogba was awful on Sunday. What does he do? Gets out of the security blanket of Manchester United like he always does. Sits down to do a press conference like he does for France. Somebody asks him the question and they did ask him the question about Real Madrid. And as per usual, he opens up and speaks glowingly about Real Madrid. He doesn't need to answer the question like that. And straight away, I just want to say he did say, I'm in Manchester. I love my club. I want to get the club uh, back to where it deserves. Fine. Absolutely fine. But when you're asked, what about, uh, asked about um, going to Real Madrid and you say, it's a dream to play for Real Madrid, why not one day? You don't need to say it. And I think, look, I know how it works with Pogba. There's a lot of people who I think are unfair on him. And there's a lot of people who I think basically live up his backside. For me, I sit in between. I think he's a fantastic player. I like the player. But don't come at me and tell me that he's been a decent player for Manchester United over the last however many years he's been here. He's been a bit of a letdown. On his day, he's fantastic, but he's been a bit of a letdown. And I hear people sticking up for him going, well, play him in the... Somebody said to me this morning, well, if you play Ronaldo at centre-back, he's not going to score 50 goals. Play Pogba in the right position and you'll get the best out of him. And I'm like, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I actually know quite a lot about Paul Pogba. I remember Paul Pogba when he came through the youth setup. I remember Paul Pogba at Juventus because Juventus is my Italian team and I like Italian football. And then he came back to Manchester United. So I've pretty much seen Paul Pogba's career, including internationals for France and international tournaments. And this absolute myth that he's being played out of position is lazy and shows a lack of football knowledge. He is not a midfielder being played in goal. He is a box-to-box -box midfielder being asked to do a little bit of defensive work and actually anybody who says Pogba's a cam is an idiot because he's not a cam he is over six foot two which means his aerial ability is a massive plus point for a midfielder because most midfielders aren't that mobile and that big so Paul Pogba's best position is in the centre circle he's got a passing range unparalleled to anybody else he can hit a 40 yard pass better than anybody in world football as far as I'm concerned he's also very athletic as I said he's very tall so his height's good for protecting the balls over the top towards the defense and also he's absolutely brilliant at dribbling so if he actually gets the ball and drives forward which we never see him do anymore he's really good from the middle of the pitch now you put Paul Pogba on the edge of the box yeah he can do little flicks and little passes but actually you take away from the fact that he's He's got the physical attributes to be a really good box-to-box -box player. He's got that height. He's got that passing range. And he's got that dribbling ability as well. Paul Pogba is a conductor. And, and, he, and he should be one of the world's best players. Why he isn't, he needs to look at himself for that. Because it's got nothing to do with him being played out of position. I'm fed up of hearing, put better players around him, you'll get a better player. Put me in a Manchester United midfield with Matic behind me, Bruno in front of me, Greenwood, Rashford next to me, and I'll be a better player than if you put me with Cleverly, Anderson and McTominay behind me. Of course I am. He's one of the world's best talents. You've got to stop making excuses for how he's been inconsistent in a Manchester United shirt. I really like Paul Pogba. I think he's a fantastic player. 
But there is no getting away from the fact that he has not grabbed this opportunity at Manchester United as much as he should have done. And when he says he's working hard like the rest of the team, bollocks, you're not. You're not. If that's your... To be honest with you, if that's you working hard, and that's, and he actually said this, he said, um, I will give everything to the max like my teammates. Well, you, you know, you're not giving your max and your teammates aren't giving your max because that's not your max. And I'm actually sticking up for him here. If that's Paul Pogba giving his max for the last four years, he's lying to himself. He's way better than that. He has not performed in a Manchester United shirt anywhere near his ability. So if that's him playing to his max, he needs to have a long, hard look at himself and say... You know what? I'm not. You're not playing to the max because I know you're a far better than play, player than that, and we haven't seen enough of it. But look, in fairness, he's not the only one. You know, most of the team are like that. You could name 15 United players like that. So I'm not going in on Pogba for that. What I am going in on, on him for is we've just lost the football game 6-1. Roy Keane last night said these players lost one manager a job. They're going to lose Oli a job, and he's right. You know, and Roy Keane's one, my favourite Manchester United player of my lifetime. He's not my favourite person off the pitch. You know, I think some of his comments aren't particularly great. But, but he's right here. He's absolutely spot on here. These players are not giving their max and they are not the right... You know, some of them are just not Manchester United players. They're, they're not good enough. I was thinking about this today. And I know I'm going to wander off here because I want to talk about some of the topical stuff. But you know what? I saw Brandon Williams today do a really yesterday do a really nice thing. Somebody had a 53 printed on the back, and United said they wouldn't change it to 33. So Brandon Williams said 33. I'll do it for you. I thought that's really nice. And then I wandered off, and it's not Brandon Williams' fault, but it's a good example. I thought, you know, there's Brandon Williams. He's got all the retweets, he's got all the likes, he's got all the social media. He's growing. That's great. He's a young player doing well at Manchester United. And then I just thought, Brandon Williams at Liverpool, at Manchester City, at Chelsea. Where is he in that squad? Is he even is he even out of the reserves? And he said that to he, he did an interview last year and he said, you know, I could drop down to the reserves. I've got to stay on my toes. And I'm not saying he's not good enough to be part of our first team. But it took me away from Brandon Williams. And I thought, I like Brandon Williams. I want him to do well. We don't know whether he is going to do well. But then I thought, Brandon Williams trains with the first team. Brandon Williams trains with Martial and Pogba. Now, whether that's good or not, he's a young lad. But Phil Jones trains with the first team. You know, Lingard, Pereira, Delo. I know some of them aren't there anymore. Mata, Igalo. You start going through our squad. There's a lot of players that train as part of our first team. Now, training is important because if you're at Man City and you're at Liverpool, look at the squad depth in Chelsea. They're training with each other. They don't know whether they're going to start. Ziyech doesn't know whether he's starting. Hudson Adoy doesn't know whether he's starting. They've got lots and lots of good players. And, they, you know, it's a competitive environment. I think one of the big problems Manchester United have is that over the last eight years, our wider squad has been huge with overpaid crap. And I just think that the standards have dropped because when you're training with a Phil Jones or a Marcus Rojo or any of these other Deadwood players, you know, that's your level when you're training. If I go and play football with the over 40s now, instead of playing with the, the, the men's team that I normally play with, then I'm going to think I'm Maradona because the over 40s, to be honest with you, they're not fit and they've got all sorts of ailments and it's easier for me. So if I play with them, I'm going to feel like I'm better. But if I play with the under 40s, like normal men's football, then it's going to be harder. And I just think United have this inherent laziness in their squad and an inability to go up and play to their max and an inability to be consistent because actually the, the, the whole squad and the whole team and the whole football club from top to bottom just isn't elite anymore. I think under Sir Alex Ferguson, we were elite. Everything was elite. I don't think we're elite anymore. Um, so I understand, just, just very, very quickly, I understand where Paul Pogba's coming from. I don't. I, I understand that he wants to go to Madrid. He would be a Juventus player now if we didn't have COVID. He was gone in the summer. That was going to happen. COVID, he stays. But the reality was with Paul Pogba, in the summer, when everything's going well, he's talking about signing a new contract. Last February, he's looking to move. Now he's looking to move again. Is this the sort of personality we need at Manchester United? Who, when, they, when it's going well, give me a new contract. When it's going bad, oh, it's my dream to play for Madrid. He changes his mind all the bloody time. And I think the reality is we need to... I've said it before and I'll say it again. I like Pogba, but it's time to divorce. It's time to let him go and be happy where he thinks he can be happy. And it's time, to, time for us to try and be happy as well. And I think in many ways, we've already got the player to do this. And this is where it goes back to Oli a little bit. 
Spoke about the captaincy yesterday. Let's talk about Pogba. I don't think Pogba should have started the last two games. And look, I don't agree with Donny van der Beek's agent coming out and saying, oh, you know, he's not playing games. But I can understand him being a bit pissed off. Donny van der Beek has come into this club. Real Madrid wanted Donny van der Beek and they couldn't afford him. Donny van der Beek is a new signing for Manchester United and he has not been given a start in the Premier League yet. And yet we've been starting an injured, well not an injured, a not fit underperforming Paul Pogba has played three games for United and he's not ready. And Donny van der Beek hasn't. And I just think, you know, Newcastle away, it's a tough game. You've got to make changes. You know, that result, if you if he goes with the same starting eleven as the Spurs game, and this is really important, remember this for next week. If Ole Gunnar Solskjaer starts the same team that got smashed by Spurs, he is weak. I nearly said another word. He's weak. He has got to make an example of some of those players. The captaincy needs to go from Harry Maguire. It won't. Paul Pogba needs to get dropped for Van der Beek. It won't. But you've got to make a statement. Otherwise, what happens in any walk of life is when you fail and, and, and the manager doesn't make a change, you might have a personal motivation to change, but that's on you. If a manager makes changes after a bad result, then you've got to change because you might not be in the team. So you've got to change and make sure that doesn't happen again. He's got to send strong messages out. He has to, but we're wandering away from where I want to be. Time for Pogba to go. He's only player in Europe that talks about leaving his club every international break. I think we missed the trick in Grealish's Dazzo W. We didn't miss a trick in Grealish. Jack Grealish is a fantastic player. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wanted Jack Grealish, but he was priced out of a move. Aston Villa wouldn't sell him for anything less than 70 million. So we couldn't do the deal. So look, Grealish is fantastic. Manchester United wanted him. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wanted him. We couldn't do the deal because it was too expensive. So, you know, saying we should have got Grealish. Oh, we're idiots. To be fair, United couldn't do that deal. Uh, Pogba has to go. Two years ago, he had the worst running statistics for any midfielder in the league. We would never win a league with him in our midfield, says Benjamin. Uh, Covid equals Pogba and no Sancho. No Covid equals Grealish plus Sancho. I would take the latter any day. It's a fact that Mourinho was not the only problem back then. Aggressive board would have let both of them out, says Akil. Look, I don't know where I am on Paul Pogba. Uh, and I know most of you said sell him when we spoke about his contract a couple of days ago. I don't know where I am with him. Covid has killed people. Covid is a horrible, horrible, horrible pandemic. You can't, we can't think of a world without COVID because we've got it and it's impacting things way more important than football. The reality is if we didn't have COVID, we wouldn't have Pogba and we would have Sancho and we probably would have Grealish. And look, everybody doesn't want COVID. So it's not about, oh, I wish we didn't have it because Pogba would be gone and we'd have Sancho. That would have happened, but we do have it. And Pogba is here and we couldn't sell Pogba in the summer because nobody had the money to buy him. And they might not have the money to buy him next year. And he said himself he expects a contract offer to come. Now, the scary thing for me is what I said two days ago is that he signs that contract because he just doesn't have the mentality to be at Manchester United. He doesn't. And, and you know, I'm not, I don't, as I said, I don't really have a problem with him wanting to go. If he's ambitious, he should go. But I don't want him signing a new contract with the mentality that he's got because as we've said, it seems to me, and I, I, I wish I'd predicted it because I always normally do say it. When we go on an international break, I think it's because of the transfer window, I'll say, watch out on international break if Pogba's with France. It's always good when Pogba's injured and he's not with France because you know he's not going to say anything. But whenever he's with France, he always gets asked the question and he always answers it. And there is no excuse. And look, it might be part of the bartering toy. It might be Raiola said to him when you get asked about Real Madrid. I mean, look, in the world of football, that question he gets asked about Madrid may well have been staged. He might have been, you know, it could have been his agent to a journalist. Can you ask him the question about Madrid? And Pogba, when you get asked it, say this. Say you love Manchester United, but your dream is to play for Real Madrid. Because that's going to make Man United fans panic. It's going to make the club panic. And that's another 50 grand a week you're going to get in your new contract. It may be that Raiola and Pogba know the contract at Manchester United is the best they can do because in COVID, nobody else is going to be able to afford him anyway. I don't, I'm not so sure Real Madrid can afford him next year. But if that's his dream, maybe he makes the move. But the issue is, every time he goes on international break, he asks the question, he answers the question. Like if I'm Manchester United's midfielder and I've just lost 6-1 and I truly care about this football club and what a mess it is, and it is a mess, and I get asked on international duty, what about playing for Real Madrid in the future? The easiest answer without even thinking is to say, I'm a Manchester United player. There's no relevancy asking me about Real Madrid at the start of a season. I'm a Manchester United player and this is where I want to be. Next question. Bang. 
There's no ambiguity. There's no flirting. There's no, you know what? There is no need for it. There's absolutely no need for it. It really does piss me off. And, and he's not the only one to do it. I mean, look, we've heard that Cavani wants to go and play for Boca Juniors yesterday. So just, can we just get, I mean, but this goes back to Solskjaer, the club, the board, Ed Woodward. There's so much lack of respect for Manchester United from everybody apart from you, the fans. We respect the club. Nobody does. Because beyond this football club that we love, we're not respected. The players don't really respect us. Look at the way Romero's been treated. Ferdinand's been treated. We don't treat our players well. Herrera was allowed to walk out the door. The players in the dressing room know the club's a joke. The fans love the club, but, you know, in transfers and everything like that, we're perceived to be a joke. Agents think we're jokes. Other clubs think we're a joke because we are a joke. We're a circus. And, the, and you know, so I do empathise with Pogba to a certain extent because he's like, the club's a joke. You know, I want it to do well, but it's a joke. Real Madrid, I'd love to go there. But it's the fans that you need to, you know, you need the fans on side, Paul. And it, it disrespects the fans to say, yeah, it's my dream to play for Real Madrid one day. Why not? Of course, think it. I don't want you to lie. I don't want you to say oh, I'm not thinking about it. But there's a way to answer a question. Look, if you want to play for Real Madrid and Real Madrid is your dream... Tell me no Riola, he's got a big gob and he'll tell Zidane. You don't need to tell the world about it. It just, you know what I mean? I'm sure there's people there saying, well, if he's got ambitions to play with Real Madrid, so what? But he can tell Real Madrid about his ambitions without putting it on the back of every paper in the world. He doesn't need to do that because all it does is disrespect Manchester United fans. We don't need to hear that. You know, Paul Pogba is a media mogul. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's a huge brand. An absolutely huge brand. Manchester United fans are hurting. They've just had a terrible transfer window. We've just been smashed by Spurs 6-1. And now our biggest iconic player a few days later says, it's my dream to play for Real Madrid. It's just idiotically disrespectful to fans. And it's going to cause him more problems. Because there are fans out there that were coming round to Pogba, but there's always fans there that don't like him. I do like him, but... I just think I just think it's stupid. But I would drop him anyway. I would drop him for the game against Newcastle. But I'll guarantee you now, Harry Maguire will be captain and Paul Pogba will start and Donny van der Beek will be on the bench. And, and to, as I said last night, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer needs to grow a pair. He's going to lose his job. Roy Keane is right. He is going to lose his job sticking by and being loyal. And I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's big problem is he learnt it from Sir Alex. Be loyal to your players. But he's loyal to the wrong people. And I'll tell you what, in life, if you're loyal to the wrong people, they'll stab you in the back. Worst part is the disrespect to Ollie, who has protected him. Don't actually care if he leaves. Clearly doesn't respect his teammates, managers and fans, says Samir. Well, I, I don't know what goes on in the Manchester United dressing room, but I can pretty much guarantee that Paul Pogba is a big influence in the dressing room. And if he's there in France saying, my dream's to play for Real Madrid, what do you think the younger players are thinking? You know, well, if Paul's saying that, I wouldn't mind a bit of that. The mentality in that football club is broken. I would love, 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 love to be in charge of Manchester United just for a couple of weeks. Because, yeah, the, the, you know, there might be a big... Pro I, I think we're at that point now. You know, people would say, oh, it would be anarchy. But the, but we're, we're anarchy anyway. We're just papering over the cracks of anarchy. We're broken as a football club. It's like putting... We're trying to put together a broken mirror with bloody blue tack or glue it's still broken man look i look at donny van der beek i look at bruno fernandez i look at matic i look at eric bay i look at rashford i look at greenwood and a few others and i see look there might be question marks about their ability sometimes but they have the right mentality there's a lot of players in that team that don't have the right mentality it's like it's like having a beautiful garden right and there's a, you've got a weed problem and weeds keep growing. Now, if you let the weeds grow amongst the flowers, they will kill the flowers and it won't look nice. If you pull out all the weeds, it will take a bit of effort. You might lose a few flowers while you're doing it because their roots might be the weeds might be wrapped up in their roots. But you will get rid of the weeds long term and you'll be able to grow a nice flower bed. At the moment, we're growing a flower bed and it's infected with weeds and it's going to kill it. And we've just been doing this for eight years. We need to take the weeds out. And I'm not saying that Paul Pogba's a weed. I'm not saying that Harry Maguire's a weed or anything like that. What I'm saying is we've all got our own ideas. There are players that we would be better off just saying it's not worked out, get out. Or bringing players in that we that we want to bring in and giving them an opportunity. Because you talk about Palestri, you talk about Ahmed Traore. 
They're going to come in as young people, impressionable, and learn from this lot. Do you trust this lot we've got at the moment to nurture young talent in the right way? I don't. Do you think they're going to get the winning mentality? Do you think they're going to get the passion for the shirt from the lot, the current set of players that we've got? They're a bunch of jokers. They're a disgrace. Saturday, Sunday was a disgrace. Not one of those players deserves the right to nurture talent that we've bought this, this, this. I mean, there's a mistake in itself. You know, two 18-year-olds that are going to be world beaters. Who's going to teach them to be world beaters? We haven't got any leaders in that team. So, yeah, it's, it's a sad end to the week, really, because it's pissed me off. Fred van der Beek and Bruno midfield equals tenacity, said Aidan Jario. Uh, mate, I would love to see him do something like that. Do you think he's going to do it? Anyway, Eric Bay, injury blow. Um, he went down yesterday playing for Ivory Coast. It looked like it was his hamstring. He was rubbing his hamstring. He was taken off, but then he said that it's muscle fatigue. So Eric Bay may not have a hamstring injury. But what I would also say is that this is a warning. If Bay hasn't got a long-term injury, and I still think he might do, um, this is going to happen. He's only played three or four games and he's got muscle fatigue in his injury. He is injury prone. Now, some people before Sunday thought Eric Bay was the answer. I've heard people saying if Eric Bay can stay fit, he's one of the best centre-backs in Europe. You're having a laugh. He's not one of the best centre-backs in Europe. He's one of the best centre-backs in Manchester United, but that's not hard. He's not one of the best centre-backs in the Premier League. He's OK. And the reason Eric Bay is OK is because he's quick compared to Maguire and Lindelof. So Eric Bay is very important to United. He's nowhere near good enough. But he won't. We can't. We can't use him anyway. He's going to get injured. He's injury prone. He will get injured. And if he's not injured this time, he'll be injured in a couple of weeks. He's going to get injured. It is inevitable. And this is the stupidity of the board again. We needed a centre back this summer, and we decided not to do it. And it will cost us goals. We've already let eleven goals in in three Premier League games. We're going to let a lot more in, or. Or, worst of all, we're going to go to a back five, which is going to make us a very boring side to watch because we're basically going to park the bus cowardly trying to preserve everybody's job. That's what we're going to try and do. It's now about arse protecting. It's now about saving each other's job. And that's what's, you know, if we go 5-3-2, that is basically trying not to concede and scrape goals at the other end. Is that in year two, well, year three for Oli, is that really what he... Be, if he goes 5-3-2 against Newcastle, he's definitely going to do it against PSG. He'll definitely do it against Arsenal and Chelsea. And I tell you what, it's the long goodbye. I think oli has got a question to answer here. You know, you either play the way that you're meant to play or you become a coward. And if he becomes a coward with a back five, then you can all say it's the right thing to do now. You won't be saying that after three or four games. You're just going to see a really negative, boring United side that's going to bore you to death. And um, he will he will start to lose even more fans. But to be honest with you, what would you do if you were Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? He's got no decent centre-backs. They're, they're, we're letting goals in like a sieve. He's going to be forced to do a back five. And basically, as I said, when the transfer window closed, they've basically sacked him. It might not be Christmas. It might not be till next summer. But they've basically sacked him in my mind because they haven't backed him. And it's going to force him to do things that he didn't want to do. So that's what I feel about that. We will get more injuries as well. Cavani's very injury prone. Um, Twan Sebi, people keep saying Twan Sebi's back. I, I mean, this is irrelevant news as far as I'm concerned. He's been out for a year. A player that's been out, you know, a year in a footballer's career is you never, you're never out for a year. Never out for a year anymore. You know, even even when you turn your knee inside out, you, you're still back in about eight months. A year, Twan Sebi's been out, and people are like, "Yay, Twan Sebi's back." I can't, I mean, if he's not injured again before Christmas, it'll be a miracle. Because when you've been out injured for a long time, you come back and then you pick up other injuries because your body's just not used to it or you're compensating for the recovery of the other injury. So I'd love Twan Sebi to be um, the answer for Man United. But to be honest with you, he's injury prone as well. So we're, we're screwed at the centre-back positions. Uh, Ewan McCullough says, I told my girlfriend that although I love her, I dream of leaving her for a girl in my office and now she's all at, all upset for some reason, says Ian Mac. I see what you've done there, Ewan, and that's it, isn't it? That's exactly it. That's what Pogba's done this week. It's like if you've got a girlfriend or boyfriend and you say, I love you, but I dream of leaving you for another girl in the office. Let's see if your current girlfriend is happy about that. And that's exactly what Paul Pogba's done. I love that from you. And it's the sort of thing I normally come out with, but I'll give you the credit. Absolutely spot on. Anybody defending what Pogba's done there, 
Imagine that. If you've got a girlfriend or a boyfriend, they come home tonight and say, I really love spending the weekends with you, but there is this really hot guy or girl at school. Uh, sorry, not school. At work. Better not be at bloody school. Unless it's another teacher. Might be a teacher. Um, yeah, I dream of spending the weekend with them. But I'm happy with you. I love you. But I'd love to move in with them. Oh, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, I'd start Van der Beek over Pogba all the time. Van der Beek is technically brilliant, assured on the ball, intelligent uh, with and without the ball, always gives 100% and brings energy to the midfield. Cashy, I agree with you. I think that Van der Beek needs to start playing games for Manchester United because he's he's used to 100 miles an hour pressing the ball. Our players aren't. This board would have planned already to dedicate an entire summer window to sell Pogba for an extra five. Surely he's not signing a contract now. Don't want to either. So like, I wouldn't be surprised if he did sign a new contract, to be honest. Hey, Mark, it's my mate Harshil's Harsh birthday. Can you call him a Pratt, says Zamir. Uh, Harshil, happy birthday. Uh, Oli needs to hire a new defensive coach and be more ruthless or he will lose his job by Christmas, says Gustav. He needs to be more ruthless. If you bench Pogba and Maguire, who are the highest commercial earners, would Edward would accept it? I have a feeling Oli is stuck with such players, says Mohan. But Mohan, I understand why Oli Gunnar Solskjaer might stay in the job after a terrible transfer window because, you know, you wouldn't want to walk away from it. But if you've been told by Ed Woodward that you can't bench Paul Pogba and you can't bench Harry Maguire, it's long time to go back to Mulder. You know, it really is time to get out of that football club um, because you can't manage. You can't manage if you do that, can you? You just cannot do that. Um, in other news, there's still talk of Jesse Lingard going on loan to Porto. Uh, the Portuguese transfer window doesn't close until the end of October. I can't see this happening. Um... I just can't see that happening. Uh, I think, you know, Lingard should have tried to get a move. Maybe he did try to get a move, but I, I just can't see it happening. Um, but, you know, this is out there again. Morning, Mark. Four players, Martial, Matic, Shaw and Bruno, in my opinion, are the most consistent ones. The rest are pathetic. I feel for Oli, says Jordan Such. And if Oli plays uh, a back five, it shows how clueless he is, says Real New Money, 818. Well, it will be, an, it will be, this is what I mean. I'm not saying the back five against Newcastle won't work. We might keep a clean sheet and score a couple of goals on the break, but um, it won't. You know, it will be the beginning of the end for Ollie. If you've got to go back to playing a back five when you're two years into the job, um, it, it, it really does demonstrate a problem. He's had two transfer windows, three transfer windows now, and you're going to go and play a back five. Um, but I think a lot of people like the idea of a back five because Teles can play left wing back. But what you're not realising is one player that's playing well in a in a system like that, we will not have much of the ball. It will be very, very defensive. Um, Martial consistently hasn't scored, to be fair, Jordan, says Robert McCormack. To be honest, to be honest Robert, though, um, in all the games that Martial's played this season, I can't think of a shot on goal. Crystal Palace, Brighton, and I know he wasn't on, on for Spurs much, but I can't remember his creating a chance for Martial in those games. I know I'm wrong, but I can't think of many chances that we've created for him. And yet, I've watched Spurs play three times this season, and I'm, Harry, Harry Kane's getting about three or four good shots a game, like good chances. Um, this season, we've gone back to the start of last season where we're not creating chances. So, yeah, I think that... Um, I think Martial might have had one or two against Brighton. But the, the chance creation for Martial, he's not going to score goals if you don't create chances. It's as simple as that. Um, let's get rid of Quibble Quil, And uh, agree we should let Pogba go. We have Van der Beek. We move on, says Nasri. Um, Active Dan says Shaw isn't consistent. I knew that one was going to start people off. Robert McCormack says that's because he's on the halfway line. I don't know who you're talking about now. Pogba should be captain. Came through the academy and have you seen his French team pep talk before they won the World Cup, says Olamide. Welcome to the uh, United Stand, Pogba FC. And Martial is bang average, says uh, Funksum. I mean, we do get a lot of people in here who are not United fans and sometimes you do spot their comments. I think we've just read the last two out. Clearly not United fans. Harry Kane drops deep and drops deep and creates chances, says Hemorrhage. Uh, so does Anthony Martial. Um, and Harry Kane got eight assists this season. Now compare with Martial, no excuse, says Kasanka. Oh, God. Um, I, I really apologise to everybody for the last four comments. The, the eye gets drawn in and we've, we've gone from bad to worse with all of those. So 
Anthony, Anthony Martial should now be getting eight assists and eight goals because Harry Kane did. Okay, all right. Let's let's see how many goals Harry Kane gets in a Man United shirt because he wouldn't get many, I tell you. That our team is playing shit at the moment. You would not get goals and assists in this United team. If we're playing five at the back, I would rather see a three four three than a five four two. Says Dazu W. And uh, why don't we sell Pogba and get Grealish and up in Meccano? Says Jack D. And we are Liverpool. We're going to win the Premier League. Says Chimney. Did Liverpool not have a fan channel? Like I just. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm a brilliant presenter, and the United Stand is a superb channel, and we've got a brilliant community. But it always amazes me how how many non-United fans actually watch us. Um, they really must have shit content in their, for their own club. Uh, okay, so Bay out for weeks through hamstring injury. Damn it, says Tiger Eight. I don't think that has been confirmed. Actually, I think he himself has said that it's a uh, it's just a, a muscle injury. Um, Uh, ESPN have come out and said that Haaland and Sancho remain at the top of Solskjaer's wish list. Solskjaer has been forced to accept the signing of players who were not initially on his list. No shit, Sherlock. No shit, Sherlock. Don't even know what I said there. Um, I've lost. I've lost it. I'm losing the plot. It's been a very hard week. I mean, yeah. I mean, look. If Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's uh, targets are Sancho and Haaland, I mean, get get a new target because, you know, I, I don't think any of us have got any. App. I mean, fair play to ESPN for writing the article, but I don't think there's a there's, there's a United fan out there that's got any excitement at reading that our targets are still Sancho and Haaland. I mean. Haaland we should have got in December and Sancho we should have got in the summer. You know, I've got no interest in whether they're still targets. Like, we should have got... Haaland should be here already. Sancho should be here now. But they're not. So I don't care who your target is. You know, it really, really, really doesn't matter because we are... I don't trust the board. They're, they're incompetent. So our targets could be Marcus Albright and I don't care. We're not... You know, we probably wouldn't sign them. There's, there's there's zero point getting excited about any United transfer activity anymore because these players should be wearing Manchester United shirts and they're not. And they're not because we're incompetent. And I agree with Pogba on that. You know, I agree with Pogba being ambitious and wanting to go and play for Real Madrid. My issue is just have some respect for the fans and don't say it publicly. It's just, it really has irritated me this morning. There's no reason for him to say it. No reason to come out and start talking about your dream move being Real Madrid one day, let's see. You know, shut up. Seriously, shut up. It's it's just disrespectful. United fans have been through enough at the moment. You know, you were on the you were part of the team that got smashed on Sunday. You know, you're a fat you, you as a player of the club, you should have been interested in transfer deadline day as well. Have some empathy for the foot for the football fans that actually put you where you are. You know, you're a superstar because of Manchester United fans. So you're certainly paid by the Manchester United fans. Have some bloody respect for them. And look, throwing in a line about loving Manchester means nothing when you've just come out and said Real Madrid. I mean, as Ian said, I think he's absolutely hit the nail on the head. Paul Pogba said, I love Manchester United. Um, uh, I want to. I want us to get back where we, we need to be. But then he also said, my dream is to play for Real Madrid. It's exactly like being in a relationship with somebody, going home that night and saying, I really love you, I really love you, but... It's my dream to move in with the, that beautiful person next door. Well, th thanks. It's it, it's lasagna for tea. Should we watch Broadchurch? You know, what am I supposed to do with that? Oh, you love me, but if something better comes along, you'd love. That's your dream. It's just it's idiotic, and and I don't for one minute think Paul Pogba's an idiot. He just can't keep his gob shut about other clubs when he's on international duty. And it's disrespectful to fans. I don't care what anybody says. And look, I'm a big fan of Paul Pogba. Like I say, there's a lot of people that aren't. And there's some people who live up his arse. I, pre I prefer to be in the middle. I, I really like him. I think he's a fantastic player. But I don't think he's performed anywhere near to his level at Manchester United. But I'm fed up of reading his comments. On every international break with France, he has to open his gob up. And he ain't stupid. So this is his agent again. Who, you know, who, his agents will come out with something where everyone will go, good on Riola. 
But really, Riola's a bit of an arse. He is a bit of an arse. Genuinely sad that the younger fans like me are the ones in the future that have never experienced success. This club will be the end of me, says Aditya. Welcome to the Members Club, Omar. Thanks very much for joining. And Shahik says, Maguire looked good at Leicester because he played deep and he didn't have to chase. Remember, he looked great when we played counter-attack. He was never the signing. We wanted to play a high line to shake. It's a very good tactical point there. And Ollie's wish list plays at Dortmund rather than waiting for them and get old. Ollie should work for Dortmund, says Akil. Well, yeah, there's three players there that we should have. Anyway, look, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, we will be back, of course, at 8 o'clock show tonight. I've got a good video for you coming up this afternoon as well. Um, I hope you have a good day. It is Friday and uh, we've got rid of week one from the uh, bloody international. The sooner we're back playing football, the better. I know some people say that the longer we, before we play again because we're going to have some bad results. But uh, let's get on with it. I just want to get on with it. I really do. Thanks everyone for watching. Speak to you all soon. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll speak to you in a bit.